we will talk about the earned value model right now. So this is very important aspect of reviewing and the monitoring schedules. If I have one activity only, activity A, I have the total cost $10,000. The activity has four duration to complete. Original duration is four days. And I wanted to do my update by the end of day one only. So after one day, I want to check the progress of that activity. You want to refer to the schedule percentage complete. The same description here is as per Bavera. So if you search for this column, you're going to have schedule percentage complete or plan the percentage. It's a 25% because one day elapsed out of four. So 25% should have been completed. You can see also the plan the value cost. Well, 25%. Time $10,000 total cost, then I should have done work worth $2,500. The activity percentage complete is from site as per the progress data, it's only 10%. So clearly, we are in delay. We, we are supposed to have 25%, but we did only 10%. The earned value cost in this case is $1,000. Why? 10% completed times total cost. So this formula is called earned value cost. The remaining total cost in this case is the whole total cost, $10,000, minus the earned value cost, then I have 9,000. So $9,000 are left for me to claim for. I have also the remaining duration, four minus 0.1, which is the 10%, times the four, the original duration. So what the remaining duration is, this is the same formula I showed you in Promovera when I did my iteration in the excavation progress. I wanna finish, I wanna have 10% only times four days duration. So this is the equivalent of the progress, the 10%. Then I wanna have the original duration minus the this value. So in Promovera, if you have 10% for this activity specifically, you're going to end up having 3.6 remaining duration after you apply 10% activity percentage complete inside Promovera. But Promovera does not show decimals. It will round that number, round it only. It will not round it up or down. It will round it only to the nearest in integer. So we're going to have four days as well. So later on, sometimes for some activities like that, you're going to have 10 days. You're going to look at the remaining duration, but nothing could change it, although you did percentage. But the percentage is not high enough to convert the remaining duration into a number that you can see it change it. If you have 20%, maybe you will have 3.4. So if you round it, you're going to have three not for in this case, so you can see the remaining duration change with you, but the 10% is not high enough. The variance here is actual percentage minus 25%. Actual percentage is 10% minus the planned percentage, 25%. It means the variance is negative 15%. Of course, we know it's in delay. I did 10% only while I am supposed to have 25%, so it's negative 15%. This is the same example we have seen. Everything is the same, okay? Like activity, four days duration, planned and actual, etc. But I'm gonna deal from labor units perspective. We talked about why we need both cost and labor units, right? So we need to monitor and report progress data based on both parameters, cost and labor units. I'm gonna have labor units overall 10,000 hours that Plan the percentage, 25%. Plan the value labor units, 250. It means, in other words, 250 labor hours should have been allocated to that activity. The earned value is 100 hours. Is it the actual? No. The 100 hours is the earned value. It's like virtual, actually. So this number is really virtual. I will talk about three different labor unit factors. The first factor is the one you see right now, planned value labor units. We, we know how to calculate it, 
times 1,000 hours. I should have spent 250 hours on that activity. The second factor is earned value labor units. The percentage complete 10% times 1,000 hours. So earned value labor units overall 100 hours. The third factor is the actual hours. So this is in hours, right? So we know the budgeted labor units are calculated based on the duration, number of resources, right? We had this sheet, the productivity sheet, and we end up having the budgeted labor units, okay? So what if your plan is to have um, 10 labors, but you had on site 15 labors, okay? So 15 labors are assigned. You might think, this is the, this is perfect, you know, I'm going on track. It doesn't have to be the case. Maybe you do not hire skilled laborers. And maybe there is lack of supervision on site. Laborers are not doing what is expected from them. They do not achieve the required productivity or expected productivity. There are so many factors. It can happen that although the planned demand power is 10, you assign the 15, but you are in delay. So the actual manpower, the 15 laborers, is a factor that I do not consider in my earned value model because it doesn't matter if you hire one or 15 or even 100. I care about the progress, how much I achieved and how much I can convert into the earned value labor units. So in terms of practicality, what does the 100 units mean? You cannot say actual because actual can be 15 labors. It could be 1,000 hours spent actually with wages on site, but I don't care about that number. I care about the progress. So earned value labor unit is like virtual, but it's a good indicator to reflect the progress. Maybe you have 1000 hours actually spent, but you are getting back a hundred hours worth of work or progress. If you can follow me on that, this is another maybe translation to the earned value labor units. That's my worth of progress. So if you are spending actually on site 200 hours, it means that for each two hours actually spent on site with wages and the labors, you are getting back one hour worth of money and the progress. You can also maybe explain it this way if you want. It's up to you, but I want to let you understand the concept here. So you are maybe it's a good example to explain like that. So if I have 200 hours, for my actual manpower, for each two hours spent okay, with wages on the activity, I get one hour of progress. Remaining labor units, remaining duration as well. Variance also is still the same, okay, 15%. Because it's the same activity, same progress, but two different measures. Okay, that was easy. <laughs> Let's um, take more complicated example. I have right now two activities, not only one. I have for activity A, four days allocated for it. This is my total cost, and this is my labor units for activity A. $10,000 and 1,000 hours for labor units. Activity B will start on day three. It will also take four days duration. Total cost, $20,000. Labor units, 500 hours. I want to calculate the progress by end of day three okay so let's take each activity once at a time and calculate everything the way we did before for activity a i'm gonna have planned the 75 percent why that's my activity a three days elapsed out of four so i get 75 percent for activity b only one day elapsed out of four so it's 25 percent the planned value cost will be calculated accordingly based on the planned percentage. But you want to multiply it by the corresponding total cost here for each activity. $10,000 for activity A, $20,000 for activity B. I'm going to do the same for labor units, but multiply it by labor units. $1,000 for activity A, $500 for activity B. Okay, the actual activity A is 50%. Activity B is 10% only. So here for the activity A, I should have completed 75% by end of day three, but I actually completed 50%. Activity B is also in delay. The planned is 25% and actual is 10%.
you can calculate the earned value cost and the earned value labor units accordingly by multiplying the activity percentage complete time the total cost or labor units for each activity okay very straightforward but what if i wanted to calculate the planned percentage for all project for both activities by end of day three it's very easy to calculate it for each activity separately but i want to calculate both activities or three or a hundred it's the same concept the last thing you want to do is to sum the percentage so do not sum the 75 percent and the 25 percent it's gonna give you 100 percent overall that is not true i cannot say here it can be planned the percentage 100 percent because i should have completed all two activities so by end of day six i should have completed activity a all and I should have completed also 100% of activity B. So day six is where I can say that planned percentage is 100%. But this is not true. I want to have um, weightage or I want to find a way to calculate the overall planned percentage. And here is what we need to do and how Promovera is calculating that accordingly. The overall planned percentage is you're going to sum the planned value cost for each activity. So I got planned value cost for activity A plus 5,000 for activity B divided by the sum of budgeted total cost of both activities. So sum over sum, sum planned cost divided by the sum of budgeted total cost. Okay, so 7,500 plus 5,000 divided by 10,000 plus 20,000. The overall is 41.6. So that's the overall for the project. Overall actual, the same approach. You're gonna sum the earned value cost for uh, both activities here. Earned value cost 5,000 plus 2,000 divided by the same denominator, which is the budgeted total cost. So 10,000 plus 20,000 equals 23.3% exactly. The planned versus actual overall is 18.3. That's exactly the same, but for labor units. Everything is the same, but we're gonna use the planned value labor units instead of planned value cost, the earned value labor units, and the budgeted labor units, and everything else is the same. And we have right now 20. 1.7 or 22 percent can you realize here the variance based on man hour is 22 percent approximately while in cost it's 18 percent that's maybe four percent different and it can be more actually and that's why we need both parameters i know i have shortage of cost 18 percent behind the cash flow but I'm having more delays in man hour. It means that when you look at both percentages, it means you have more problem with labor units. There are areas in the project which require manpower, but you have shortage there now. You need to consume and assign more manpower in certain activities. Of course, you can go in depth and find a way. Like for example, I would uh, tackle the activities with the uh, highest variance. So I have the planned value. I have the planned value labor units here, planned value labor units, and I have the earned value labor units. So the difference is the cost variance. So you want to tackle first the cost variance, the highest cost variance, because the more progress you do there, the variance will be less. And also, if you want to calculate the variance for the whole project, like the variance for the overall project, not only for selection of activities. So what if in my case here, what if I have activity C here, is scheduled here? It is not due yet. There is no planned percentage, but you're gonna take also, you're gonna divide by the total cost because you wanna see the planned value cost for the whole project and divided by the total cost for the whole project. So that's how you determine the overall progress for the whole project. And we will do a lot of that, to be honest. Like we will have progress curve, we will have more analytics, even in Excel. This is the module related to schedule update. We have also another module for the progress reports only. Okay, how we report that, but 
we only trying to understand the scalable update inside Promovera. So I gave here uh, one example about two activities and I divided by the denominator, the total cost for both activities. But what if I have four or five, but I have only two activities with planned percentage. So the denominator should be the overall cost and we will talk about it in the progress report module. Another factor is the schedule performance index or SPI. SPI it can be related to cost and the labor units. In Promovera, we see the SPI as a column, it's a called schedule performance index, and you will see SPI for a cost and SPI for labor units as well. They will work the same way, earned value cost divided by planned value cost. For labor units, the same, but for labor units. The SPI is somewhere between zero and one. What it means if it's zero? Well, if the earned value cost is zero, it means no progress. So whatever the denominator here, my SPI is zero, like there is no progress. And um, it can also be greater than one if you are ahead of a schedule. So what if the earned value cost is higher than planned? So my earned value cost is 1,000. Planned value cost is $500. You're going to have two. Okay, so it means it's ahead of a schedule. So greater than one means ahead of a schedule. What if the earned value cost equals the planned value cost? So both, by coincidence, it's 100%. Or maybe the activity is completed, maybe, and it was due at later stage. Like, you know, I should have claimed $1,000 maybe three weeks ago, and I completed the activity, so the SPI is one. So it means it's on a schedule, or uh, like there is no delay. But if it's the other way around, if I have planned value cost due that is higher than the earned value cost, which is calculated here based on my percentage complete, I'm going to have less than one. So less than one is something bad. It means that we are behind the schedule. Same for labor units.